students, welcome to the Psychologist NDTV with me, Dr. Blessing and Tamu. I hope you're doing well and I hope that your physical classes have been going on okay. Now, this is another session of our lectures online and today we are going to be discussing the concept of motivation. Under this unit, we are going to discuss the dimensions of motivation. We'll deal with some theories of motivation and then we'll deal with application of the concept of motivation to the classroom situation. Under the theories of motivation, we're going to talk about the cognitive theories. And under that, we'll look at the attribution theory of motivation and the uh, uh, self-actualization theory of motivation. And under the process theory, we'll revisit reinforcement, you know, the theory of operant conditioning. So let's quickly look at what motivation means. What is motivation? I would like to start this, this discussion by asking you a question. Why are you in school? You know, why are you even watching this video? What prompted you to click on this link to watch this video? I believe that sometimes in the night, in spite of feeling sleepy and tired, you wake up in the night to study. So I'm asking you, why do you do that? Now, the subject of motivation is simply studying into the why of behavior, why we do the things that we do, what prompts us to act in the way that we act, why do we choose one course of action as opposed to the other? You know, there's always, you know, two ways to go. So why do you choose one path instead of the other? So what's your why, really? And that's basically what motivation is about. Now, let's consider the definition by Robin in McNeil 1983. It's an age-old definition, you may say, but it's one that I think is worthy of consideration. And it forms like a basis for the modern-day conceptualization of motivation. Robin and McNeil 1983 defined motivation to be a cause, you know, that energizes, that directs, or sustains or maintains behavior. So what energizes you to act? Imagine yourself sitting down, lying down in your bed, tired and sleepy, and all of a sudden you jump out of bed to pick your books and begin to read. Something energizes you to act. Something provides that boost, that energy boost you need to act. So what is that? What motivates you? You know, and then when you start reading, possibly if there's no motive, if you're not motivated, you will not be able to read for a considerable amount of time. So what maintains or sustains your behavior when you choose a particular course of action? What directs your behavior? Like I said, why do you go left instead of going right? So that's what motivation is about. But there's an even more interesting definition, uh, quite old as well. And this was a definition given to us by Miller, 1962. As a matter of fact, it's an older definition. And it defines motivation as the pushes and prods, whether they be social, psychological, or biological, that defeats our laziness and causes us to act, whether um, eagerly or reluctantly. Like we already mentioned, sometimes you engage in behaviors reluctantly. You know, you really don't want to do this, but this is what you must do because you have a goal. Motivated behavior is actually always a goal-directed behavior. So you strive to achieve or to attain a particular objective, a particular goal, and something drives you into action. So that's what we're looking for. What drives you into action? You know, and usually behind most of our behaviors, as some schools of thought have conceptualized it, is a need. So that brings us to the point that uh, motivation, like, all psychological constructs they have been approached, the definition of motivation has been approached from different angles. You know, so there's no one set definition to motivation, but the different schools of thought have approached the definition of motivation from different angles. Okay, so for the psychodynamic, from the psychodynamic perspective, they define motivation as being unconscious. So they, they believe that our behaviors are driven by internal and unconscious determinants. So whatever drives our behavior does not operate at the conscious level. 
That's according to the psychodynamic perspective. Um, and the father of psychodynamic theory is uh, Sigmund Freud. So they believe that they are unconscious determinants from the states of awareness that Sigmund Freud um, defined. We have the conscious, the pre-conscious, and the unconscious. So he believes that whatever is going on in, at the unconscious state of our awareness, that's what drives our behavior. And that's ac according to the psychodynamic perspective. What about the behavioral perspective? They believe that behavior is driven by the consequences. So when we operate upon our environment according to operant conditioning and their consequences, whatever those consequences, they drive our action. So basically it's reinforcement that drives our behavior and the different schedules of reinforcement. And that is according to the behavioral theory. And then we have the humanistic uh, perspective, uh, the cognitive perspective. And that's the, according to um, Abraham Maslow, the uh, uh, hierarchy of needs theory by, by Abraham Maslow. Uh, he considers our behavior to, behaviors to be driven by uh, the, the by our needs, by the fact that we need to satisfy our needs. And these needs he has placed in a hierarchical order, starting from the basic needs that we need for survival, climbing onto security needs, and all the way to the social actualization need. And this also aligns with Clark Hall's uh, drive reduction theory. So because we want to satisfy our needs, then we engage in behaviors. You know, you need a job, maybe, and you found out that for you to get a job, you need to have a certificate. And that's actually what drives you to come to school, to enroll in school. And because you want to get a certificate, that's what drives you probably to study in the night because you want to pass your examinations. You know, there are different kinds of needs, okay? And according to uh, Ukbong 2020, she uh, classified these needs into the social needs, the biological needs, and the psychological needs. So another school of thought of interest to me is the biological psychology school of thought. And this school of thought is concerned with the physiological state of the individual. So it's concerned with the central nervous system, concerned with the autonomic nervous system, the endocrine glands, the hormones, the neurotransmitters, and how we try to maintain a state of balance in our physiology. So they believe that uh, what drives our behavior is a need to maintain a state of homeostasis you know so all that a human being does he does to maintain a state of homeostasis so you see these are some of the different perspectives the definition of motivation but like i said there's always something that drives your your your, your behavior i consider motivation to be a force a force that drives your behavior and actually is related to um the need to meet your needs Okay, whether there be your social needs, um, your basic needs, biological needs, your learned needs, whatever needs you want to meet, that drives your action. So it acts as a force, as an impetus, you know, to make you act, to be able to meet your needs. And so there are some concepts that are closely related to the concept of motivation that we'll be studying and some dimensions of motivation like we mentioned in our introduction to this course. We're going to be looking at types of motivation, the intrinsic motivation, the extrinsic motivation. And then we're going to look at some concepts more closely, like the concept of the a drive of need. You know, we're going to look at self-actualization. We're going to look at homeostasis, amongst a number of other concepts. But I'm going to leave that to our next video. For today, I'd like you to go and think deeply about your why. Like they say today, what's your why? Why are you in school? What are you here to achieve? What drove you into applying for admission, getting an admission? And what drives you into action while you're in school? What decides your course of action? As a matter of fact, what course of action are you engaging in? Are you engaging in the right track of studying hard, you know, and putting all the efforts on learning and acquiring knowledge before you acquire a certificate? Are you driven just by a need to acquire a certificate so knowledge does not matter to you? What course of action are you taking? Remember that motivation or those things, uh, motive is that thing that initiates a behavior and then it directs the behavior. So it determines the cost of your behavior, whether you go this way or that way. And then 
It sustains your behavior. So what's that thing for you? Is it just get a certificate at any cost, you know, through any means? Or are you going the right way? What is the direction of your behavior whilst in this college? Think about five goals that you have, five uh, actions that you take on a daily basis and think about what motivates you to act in those ways, you know. Starting to read is one thing. Sitting down to read for a considerable number of time or amount of time and then, you know, taking down notes, ensuring that you learn and actually passing your behavior, uh, your examination is another thing. What is your why? If you haven't subscribed to the Psychology Send you TV, please do so as you're going to be having more of your lecture videos coming on. Ensure that you watch each and every one of these videos um, and then ensure that if you have questions, you leave them in the comments or you direct these questions to your different lecturers in your lecture groups. From me, Dr. Blessing Tamu, I wish you a lovely week out there as you contemplate the concept of motivation and we'll see you again in the next video shortly.